All right, for our reduction print today, we have our screen already laid out with our six by six windows. We're gonna do two different forms of stencil day, one with just screen filler as a reduction, where that means you're blocking out and printing on top and blocking out, and you're just reducing the screen uh, with a block out stencil. In the other window, I'm gonna show you how to use drawing fluid. So with both of these kind of a push and pull, you can do anything that you want um, that would, can look very photographic with the amount of detail that you do. So when we have something like this as a starting point, uh, what I've done is I've lightly sprayed some spray adhesive onto our base. And what that does in printing is keeps our paper down so we're not peeling the uh, print off the back of our screen. It'll keep it down. Uh, what the screen does naturally is you pull the ink through, this, the, the screen will stretch, make contact with the paper, deliver the ink, and snap up without leaving any marks. Um, but how do you get to registering that underneath the window? If you take some mat board pieces or some strips of paper, we can actually tape it to the sides of the print you don't want to go underneath the print or, I mean, when you take the, uh, the arms underneath the print or on top of the print, because it'll raise it that extra 16th and your registration may not be perfect, you want to just tape it flush to your print. So I'm just going to take some scotch tape and I'm going to, this is our sacrificial print, so it'll get kind of ripped up, beat up, but it's going to be the one that's kind of going to help us as a guide. And so I'm also going to take a strip from the bottom and I'm flush with the print again. And with this, we can just puppet walk it underneath until you can line up your registration. So let me just show you, for example, with the screen lowered, I can now walk it until the image is exactly where I want it on my in my window. I can lift this up now and then I'm going to put the uh, Kento registration. So the runner goes, I always put on that you can, you're making a right angle which will hold that corner of the paper and a runner which allows the paper to go off the edge. Because as humans, paper can stretch. We cut it the best we can but sometimes there's a little bit of a difference. If you made two tight right angles, the paper may kind of pop out of it. So what we're gonna do is just make a runner on here and then with these two registration tabs, I'm pressing down, I'm making kind of a right angle on my left side. I can come in and line my corner up and bring it to the runner. And then we're looking at perfect registration every time. You gotta be careful when you're painting out on your stencils that you might be pressing into your drawing. So if you feel that you're too close to the drawing, you can take a paintbrush and just put it into, park it into the frame a little bit. So it's a little bit higher so that it doesn't squish underneath when you're painting out your forms. Uh, if you have some angular forms that you really want to take care of, you can, at this point, even put down some painter's tape and do the screen filler in there and peel it up if you want some really nice sharp edges. So right now I'm just going to paint out um, some of this background, a little halo around the wrestler, the mouth, and some areas around here, uh, the face that I want to uh, keep uh, white. All right, as you can see, we have the, uh, our, our design underneath with our attached to our sacrificial sheet of print paper so that we have our registration ready to go. And we have, in the meantime, blocked out with screen filler the areas that I want to stay white. So um, I'm going to print a medium red first, and I'll print that on all my sheets of paper. Then after that, I block out that area, and then I print my next color and then block out where I want to keep that color and then my last color and then we're going to go over to this second window and I'm going to show you how to use the uh, drawing fluid as a stencil which is a more direct way. For printing now I'm going to use a couple pieces of the mat board just as a lift. I put that underneath the frame and what that does during printing is it allows when we print to the, the ink will make contact with the paper and a little bit of the mat board as a lift underneath the frame makes it snap up a little bit higher. 
because sometimes when you don't use a lift and you're printing and you're pulling, by the time you get the squeegee here, the screen is still pressing into your wet ink, leaving a mark, a contact mark. So if you ever see contact marks happening, you can just create a, uh, a little extra lift, a little higher lift underneath your frame, and that will take care of that problem. I picked out a squeegee um, that is not too big for my image. You just want to be able to uh, get past it. If I had a larger squeegee, sometimes it's a balancing act on when you're playing this. Uh, all right, we're ready to go. So we are going to now remove our sacrificial print. We're going to use that later. We're going to, in its place, put a sheet of print paper. Take your time on the registration. Registration is everything on a reduction process. All right, we have our lifts in place. We're gonna elevate the screen, and we're gonna always start with adding our ink at the bottom of the screen. What we're gonna do is do a flood stroke, and what that does is just gets that screen ready to go. Gets it wet. Because these are air drying inks, you don't ever want to leave it without a flood stroke unless you're about to clean it up. So on the first pass, it, it gets kind of grabby, a little bit difficult to kind of work with. So what you do is you take your squeegee, slide it into a little bit of ink, and you're ready to go forward. We're always going to maintain about a 45 degree angle on our uh, squeegee. If you break that, it can it cause the squeegee to kind of fold over and, and to give you kind of a squishy look. If, it's ever, it's, if that's ever the case, you can just throw some newsprint underneath the screen and blot it, which basically means just press it out onto clean sheets of newsprint until it cleans and corrects itself. So about a 45 degree angle, get up to the top of the screen and I flatten the blade. What that does is it leaves all the ink behind and we're ready to go. Check our paper in place, nothing's moved. We got our lifts and we're ready to print. So again, I'm not pressing down. I'm gonna move the ink a little bit closer to the window. Press down till I feel the base. Give yourself a slight 45 degree angle and firmly pull. You're gonna feel the base the whole way. You hear that little bit of sound. That's a great sound to hear. We're gonna elevate the screen and just with a gentle 45, you don't have to press down hard on the flood stroke. You're just pressing it forward, flattening the blade to leave all of that behind. And then we have our Crazy enough, we have our first impression, which looks pretty angry, a lot of red there, but it's gonna make sense. All right, now that we've printed our last colors, no need for a flood stroke, I'll keep it open, just easier for us to clean up. And what we're gonna do is take our mat board pieces and just kind of sandwich up the ink that's in the screen and get that back into your container. And then we're gonna sponge out the image from both sides. We never wanna detach our screen. If we're doing a reduction, we want the registration to stay right where it is. So I'm gonna clean up the screen both sides until you can see through it again. And then uh, we'll dry it out with a hair dryer, and then I'm gonna block out the areas that don't wanna keep the red. So now we're just gonna sponge out the ink. And you're gonna sponge out from both sides. This is really crucial if you're using yellow ink as well because it's a yellow mesh. Uh, if you think that you have it clean, just flush it one more time just to be on the sure side. You don't want to let any ink dry in our screen. Now that we're clean, we can hit it with a hair dryer. So what I've done is I've dried out my screen with a hair dryer, cool to medium setting because we don't want to burn any holes on it. And I put back our sacrificial print underneath. And so now, because I printed the red, I need to block out those areas that I want to keep and maintain red so that we can drop the next color on. And we use a paintbrush to block out those areas of red. But uh, as you know, on brush, on brush strokes, it tends to be kind of thick and thin when you do it. And those areas might have a tendency, that, especially the thin areas, to break apart and open up and kind of look a little bit weird. Uh, but if you want a, a, a cleaner result, you can put some screen filler down, and much like we did on the outside edges, is move the screen filler with a mat board piece as close as you can in some of those areas. 
And when you do that with a mat board piece, it goes down so thin and so smooth that it doesn't break down on you during your printing. So what we did is we painted out where we want to keep the red. Don't forget when you do this to have a slight elevation so it's not making contact with your design underneath. You don't need to be super high up, but just really kind of close to it. Like I said, a couple pieces of mat board underneath your frame or a paintbrush seems to be the trick. Now we are going to print our next color, which is to bring some of that kind of yellowish yellow back into it. And I added a little extra white to it so that it's a little bit on the pastel side because it is going to react to the red. And I don't mind it warming up a little bit, but uh, this is the color that we're going to drop next. So we're a little bit out of order. Normally, some people would say you print this one first, but I really wanted to keep that red in the background really nice and uh, bright. See, the next color we want to do is after this kind of yellow cream color is you can see that uh, I've, I've tried to add these kind of uh, textural splatters, this kind of, uh, you know, specks. I'm going to take a little bit of screen filler and kind of do a faux finish where it'll look kind of broken down and look kind of uh, speckled to try to get that effect. So that's what we're going to do next. Normally I would just block out where I wanted to keep this yellow color, but again, I want to do kind of a faux finish in here. So what I've done is just taken a scrap piece of paper and some of the screen filler that we're working with. And anything that you can find that's kind of crunchy and not so soft, um, I'm just going to dab into it. see how that looks. All right, so we have our final final color for the reduction side to our stencils or to our printing. Really, really nice and crunchy. I like that. Now we're uh, going to drop our final remaining color and um, what makes this different? We're gonna be using the uh, Speedball screen drawing uh, fluid. And where you paint the screen drawing fluid is where your color goes. So just looking at this, if we wanted the black to be uh, to print, we'd have to block out everything but the black. And when it comes to like uh, tiny lines and little shapes and maybe even textures, that gets to be a, a, a little bit of a problem. So now we can just paint the glue, it, or the screen drawing, drawing fluid, exactly where we want our remaining color. We let that dry. It's, it acts like a, almost a water-based glue. And then with a little bit of screen filler, we're gonna pull over the uh, dry screen drawing fluid, which means it'll go around it. And then with a wet sponge, this uh, screen drawing fluid will act like a temporary stencil and it just opens up, revealing it uh, from there, you can dry out the screen and patch up any imperfections, reshape things if you have to. It's a fun way of doing it. All right, I applied with brush uh, the drawing fluid. And uh, if you ever make a mistake with the drawing fluid, don't worry about it right away. Just leave it as is. 
because the next step we're going to do is when a drum flute is dry, as it is now, we're going to put some screen filler on top of here, and with a piece of mat board, just like we do a squeegee, we're going to pull one nice run of screen filler, and that, what that's going to do is just, it's going to close off the rest of the screen. We'll, we'll then hit it with a hair dryer, and uh, that'll dry the screen filler, and with a wet sponge, it opens up our stencil. And then from there, if you have any mistakes or little things you want to tweak or an edge that you can shape, you can dry out the screen and a little bit of screen filler and go back in and shape up things. And the whole trick to this, to get the glue to open up very easy, is just do it in one shot. So that's the reason we don't do multiple little pieces of uh, mat board. We are just going to do one, one pole of uh, mat board across it and get it in one shot. So I get my fingers right behind it. I hold it up at a good angle, just like I would a squeegee. Get firm with it and pull. This just makes everything open up really well. Why don't we do it in multiple poles across there? Honestly, you guys, the, uh, if you do another layer of screen filler over it, it might choke out uh, the, the glue and not open up for us. I can get very fine lines to open up this way if I wanted to. With a wet sponge, and you don't have to be very aggressive with it, again, what, it, what we did was we applied glue and it's a temporary stencil, and you'll do it from both sides, and it just lifts up. We're gonna print uh, dark blue today. Looking great. All right, we'll print the rest of the addition. Last print, looks great. We'll do some detailed shots of that. But the, uh, this is basically a reduction uh, using both a screen filler and then wrapping it up at the end with a new overlapping color uh, with the drawing fluid.